All right. I'm trying to go uh, live on Instagram as well. So, ah, there it goes. Nice. Hopefully, hopefully we are live on Instagram and it is working. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Real Talk Fantasy Baseball. This is our first live episode of the season. Uh, you know, maybe we'll do more throughout the season. Usually we do pre-recorded because we are on the East Coast. And Javi and I work very early in the morning. Or actually, Javi goes into work the night before, usually at 11 o'clock at night. So it is a little tiring for us. I, I have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go to work. Javi has to wake up at 10 o'clock at night. So I uh, believe you're off tomorrow, right, Javi? Yes, I am so or tonight, I mean. off. Yeah, I work nice. tonight, and I got like uh, my Monday is Sunday night, so I have Sunday night off too, which is awesome. Oh, so, nice. I actually have the next four days off, so I'm feeling pretty good about that, man. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get this shit started. You ready? Do it. If it comes to the point where I see Matt Olson there, and I know that Bryce Harper and Pete Alonso are still waiting in the wings, like maybe a round or two later. I think I'm passing on Matt Olson. Okay, here he home run after home run after home run. I was like, holy crap! Like, it's the old Altuve, you know. And I'm going after guys like Austin Riley. That's gonna hit close to 40 home runs with a decent batting average. It has nothing to do with the luxury tax or any of that stuff, dude. It's just the owners want to bring a champion to a team. They're gonna do whatever it takes. Bro, I love that last line that you said, man. If the owners want yeah. to bring a championship, you know, they're going to do whatever it takes. That's yeah, dope, bro. dude. And that, hey, it's, you, it's reality. Opening day today, and what a great day it is to be a Dodger fan today. You know, like, obviously, I am a Dodger fan. I got the Otani jersey on. I got the, the World Series hat, you know. And, bro, yeah. the, the Dodgers did not disappoint today, man. I don't know if you watched the game. Uh, I actually turned it on about an hour after it started. And, you know, the Cardinals are the Cardinals. It's the the National League Central. But still, man, that Otani looked good. Freeman looked good. Betts looked good. Uh, Muncie yeah. had an RBI single. You know, the, the lineup looks really good, man. So I, I was pretty yeah. excited watching that game. Yeah, I didn't. Um, unfortunately, I was asleep. Um, but I like the fact that Glassnow was was able to get his his stuff together after a kind of a rough outing you know out in uh korea you know so um he looked he looked good i saw a couple highlights he looks really good man so hopefully he can stay healthy you know and help us uh you know make a a world series push you know and then otani you know with everything that's going on you know i i saw the show on monday you know with uh carlos and ernie yeah. and you know they were talking about how if it's going to affect him or not. I honestly don't think it's going to affect him that much. I think um, he's the type of player that he's going to prioritize his team over whatever else. I'm not saying it's not an important, but that they signed him to this big contract and he, you know, he knows he has to show that he's worth the contract, right? That he's worth the money that they're paying him. So a lot of freaking I money. think, I think, yeah, I think he, you know, it, yeah, it might kind of mess with him a little bit, but I think he's a professional. He knows how to handle it, and he'll be able to, you know, help the Dodgers out. You know, I really thought that it was going to make him struggle a little bit today, you know, especially on opening day. Like, there's already a lot of pressure on him as it is. And then you you add this you know pressure to the, the extra pressure, you know, because of the situation that he's in with his interpreter – um, and, and you know, it just, it's so much for a guy that's only 29 years old to have to deal with, yeah, you know, a huge contract yeah. that he has to live up to. And, you know, first year with a new team that he's only had spring training with, he can't understand anyone. If, if he's going to have a conversation with someone, you know, he's trying his best. I know that he is trying, you know, actively learning English, but. Uh, you know, if if he doesn't have his translator there, you know, with him 100 percent of the time, it's hard for him to to really have a conversation and, and build that chemistry with these guys. You know, a lot of times you're just like, you know, shooting the shit with these guys or just, you know, playing around, messing around, you know, and it's I don't know. I, I feel like it would be super hard for him today. But, dude, he looked good today, man. He looks yeah. really good. 
And it, yeah, it, it looks like the, the pressure really hasn't gotten to him like too much, you know? Um, yeah. But he is all about business, man. Like yeah. he just wants to play baseball. He wants to, to win that. That's, that's what he actually said before he even signed the contract with the Dodgers is that he wanted to sign with a team that is going to, you know, be in the playoffs that uh, is going to the world series that he could help potentially win the world series. And dude, I, I, I don't know if it was in our group text or where I sent it to, but I said, I'm predicting 2024 Dodgers win the world series. Yeah, that was today. I saw it when I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> um, dude, I'm uh I'm excited to see Otani in the playoffs, bro. Like, like I think, you know, it's time, you know. So hopefully, you know, everything that's going on with him and, and this whole situation will get sorted out. Um, you know, he's a baseball player first. You know, I'm pretty sure he's gonna put the team above anything else. So, you know, had a great Great day, opening day. He had a pretty decent outing out in Korea too. It wasn't too it wasn't too bad. So um, yeah, you know, hopefully uh, he, we can get past this and not talk about him and uh, you know about the whole situation. You know, whatever. Just, yeah, just about baseball. Yeah, and um, you know that's that's what the Dodgers are paying him for. They're paying him to hit the ball really hard and and throw the ball really hard, not to uh, get into any trouble. So, I watched the press conference, you know this this past week, and I I was watching Otani, and I I believe him. You know he was very believable in his uh, delivery, and you know everything that he was saying. You know I, I can't understand Japanese other than one two three four five. You know which my mom taught me. <laughs> Um, but you know, from what the, what the interpreter was saying, you know, from Otani, it, it seemed to be sincere. And I did read something from, uh, an actual lawyer that said that there's no way that his legal team would let him go out there and say what he said, unless he was being 100% truthful, you know? So I believe him. I think that he didn't really uh, know that anything was going on until, the night after um, the, the game one in Seoul in Korea. Hey, what's up, Jamal? Thanks for joining in, man. Appreciate you. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go to the comments real quick. Jamal says, what's up, my dudes of all the Jackson prospects? Who do you think has the best season? Um, mm. You know, I know. I, <laughs> Hobby, why don't you go ahead and take this one first? Oh, you know, the only one that I've really seen any game from is Merrill. And that was just in the Korea series. And, um, they're, you know, they're really high on this dude. Um, I still, you know, to me, it's just a, still a small sample size. Um, I heard holidays, you know, was raking in spring training. And, um, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Chirio? Chirio? Chirio. Yeah. Chirio. Dude, he's a he's 20, bro. Oh my god. Like I'm I'm I think I'm more excited to see what this guy's got. Uh Churio. Yeah. Um but, I agree. Uh, he's going to start, you know, in the minors just like Holiday. Merrill's already with the Padres, so we'll we'll be able to see more of Merrill and see what he can what he can do, you know, um starting for the for the Padres out there in in the outfield. Yeah, I think the the hype about Jackson Holiday is just it's a little too much uh for me. Um yeah. so actually I am going to go with Jackson Churio and he actually did make the opening day roster. He play he's playing right field today. Um oh so, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. if you drafted Jackson Oh, Churio, you know what? You're right. Oh, or man. if he's yeah. out there on you know free agency <clears throat> waivers, whatever. Put in your waiver claim now, uh, Jackson Churio. He is one of the top prospects in baseball. And uh, Jamal, I'm I'm going to say Jackson Churio. I think that he's going to make the most difference, you know, the most impact out of all these three guys, uh, Jackson Churio, Jackson Holiday, and Jackson Merrill. Um, Jackson Merrill, you know, I, I could see him making somewhat of an impact, but I don't really think that he's, you know, going to be like, 
I don't think that there's a lot of players out there worth dropping for Jackson Merrill. Um, I, I think if you just have like a, you know, a, a bat that you're like not sure about that is kind of like low, low owned and maybe not a lot of power strikes out a lot, you know, that type of bat, then I would definitely take a, a, a chance on Jackson Mer Merrill. But I think Jackson Churio is going to be the best one out of this bunch. So, so I, I'll, I'll uh, agree to disagree. I, I like Merrill's situation a little bit better than Churio because the Padres, you know, they, they, even though we always talk about how they're the club, you know, doesn't probably click, you know, maybe that's why they have all these, you know, you know, they, they haven't really, they haven't really done much right with the, with the team that they have, you know, they have all these nice pieces, man. And you got Machado in there, you got, um, fucking Tatis, you know, in there, you got Xander Bogarts in there, you know, these, these veteran guys, you know, even though Tatis, you know, he's, he's still kind of fresh to me, you know, Machado and Bogarts, you know, with Mero in the mix, you know, he can, he can pick up some pointers from these guys. Um, whereas with Churio, you know, I would say maybe Yelich is a good, you know, is a good, um, veteran in that clubhouse for him to kind of, um, you know, get some advice from, you know, uh, you know, he's 20 years old. So, you know, he's going to take whatever he, advice he can get from these veterans. But I, I don't know, dude, I just like, like, I just like the Padres situation better with Merrill than I do with Churio. Um, so I'm going to go Merrill. I think Merrill might, might have a little bit of a better season than Churio. So looking just at their minor the situation, stat. you know, Looking at their minor league stats, Jackson Churio played 122 games in Double A last season. Jackson Merrow played uh, 114 games last season. Um, so Jackson Merrow plays in a very bad ballpark for home runs, which is why I'm a little bit down on him. You know, I don't think he has that type of power anyway. You know, even if, know. if he played in a good ballpark, he had 15 home run, uh, 15 home runs total last season in the minors. And 10 of those were in single A ball. You know, he he hasn't even played triple A ball. He just skipped that and went straight to the majors. Uh, versus Jackson Churio that plays in a very favorable uh, ballpark, you know, for, for home runs in Milwaukee. So I think that that's actually going to play in his favor. Yeah. And the True. Padres, they, they do have a lot of um, depth, you know, especially in the outfield. Like, um, uh, I mean... Jerks and Profar is no one that's really going to stand in Jackson Merrill's way, but I feel like Jackson Merrill's really going to have to stand out, whether it's defensively or offensively or something like that, to make sure he gets that job, you know, mm -hmm. the the starting uh, position. But for Jackson Churio, I feel like yeah. they're the the Brewers outfield, like you have Yelich and um, Sal Freelich, Garrett Mitchell, Blake Perkins, you know, guys that don't really matter too much, you know, like versus. Versus the Padres that have Tatis in right field, Jurics and Profar in left field, who is a good defender, and H Jose Azokar, uh, center field is a little weak, you know, so he could have some active playing time. Mm -hmm. But I think that the biggest concern for me is that the Padres, you know, playing in Petco Park is a a, a big detriment to his power if if he does have any power. Unfortunately, we have no stat cast information on prospects because there is no stat cast in the minor leagues, at least not on baseball savant. Um, but <clears throat> the the biggest takeaway from Jackson Churio is the power. He had 22 home runs in 122 games in uh in double A last season. Only played six games in triple A, but he did bat 333 in those six games. Um not very good plate discipline. Had 103 strikeouts in 122 games last season for Jackson Churio. So the strikeouts are a little bit concerning. Um, I think that Jackson Merrill in that sense actually has a much better, um, you know, he, he has much better plate discipline. Uh, 35 walks to 62 strikeouts in 114 games. So in a points league, I, I think maybe you got me on that one. I think Jackson Merrill might be a really good add in a points league. Uh, if I'm talking categories, I think I'm going for power. Uh, Jackson Churio had 22 home runs, like I mentioned, and 43 stolen bases in double A, um, 44 on the season because he only plays six games in triple A. Yeah. So 
Um, categories League, I'm going Churio. And Points League, I, I think either one of them would be a good balance. Um, you know, it, it's really just your preference. If you prefer more the Padres because they have the better lineup, you know, like Javi said, um, they have more potential for runs, RBIs, you know, for him to knock people in or for, for other guys to knock him in. Um, but I think the power is going to come better for, uh, for uh, any Milwaukee bat versus any San Diego bat. All right. So that was the Jacksons gotcha. as Jamal was asking about. So, um, <laughs> Jackson holiday, I, I think we need to go back on him a little bit because we didn't really focus on him too much. Uh, so last season in 2023, he had he played 125 games, only 12 home runs, uh, 24 stolen bases. So this is the type of player that I think I would much rather have in a categories league as well. 118 strikeouts, and that's in the minors, man. You know, once he gets called up to the majors, that that's going to increase a lot. Oh, yeah. You know. That's only in 125 games. So if you put that on a 162 game pace, it's probably about 135, 140 strikeouts about, you know, and then when you go to the majors and you're facing guys that are throwing 100, you know, pretty consistently and with with stuff that's just so much better than anything he's ever seen in AAA, uh, I think he's going to have a hard time, you know, with that plate discipline. Um I, I mean, actually, his his plate discipline is fine. I think he just swings and misses a little bit too much. 101 walks in 125 games. So that's that's mm. actually very good, especially for a prospect that's only 20, 20 years old. You yeah. know, I, I love the plate discipline when it comes to chasing outside the zone. It looks like he, his walk percentage is pretty good, but it looks like he's striking out just too much. You know, I, I think I, I wonder if he's just like behind on the ball or in front of the ball. Um it doesn't really seem like he's chasing outside the zone, but I think he's just swinging and missing too much inside the zone. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was reading um, some stuff uh, about how they want to handle uh, Jackson Holiday. Um, doesn't have a lot of playing time in the minors, so they want him to kind of get his feet a little bit more wet. They want him to get you know used to like you know the, the the training staff and 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 stuff like that. They they also said that they want him to work um on uh hitting against left-handed pitching uh which is a big thing um and then i also heard that he's not he they're gonna move him i guess his natural his first natural position was second base i guess so they want to move him from set uh, from shortstop to second base hmm. because shortstop right now you know you got gunner you know handling the shortstop duties which I guess, it, which is Gunner's natural position. So that's another reason, you know, they, they kind of need to work with him on the position change. And well, then, another thing too is Matt McClain just got injured. So he's going to be out for a little while. So that actually yeah. opens up second base for Jackson Holiday. We might actually be able to see Jackson Holiday, Holiday a little bit sooner than everyone thought. I, I think everyone thought he was going to be like maybe like a June or, or July call up. So uh, well, I'm McClain, sorry, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of the, the wrong team that he's on the Cincinnati. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm like, wait, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> you know, you know what it is, man, between the reds and the <laughs> Orioles, they have so many prospects that they're bringing up in the last couple of years. I, yeah. I got confused for, for a moment, but, um, yeah. so Jackson yeah, holidays, so the Orioles so, do have somewhat of a crowded infield too, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, they're, they're playing that the whole, the whole service time thing too with, with holiday, they want to get that extra year from him, you know, and stuff like that. So you know how that goes. Everybody hates that because they can't get called up sooner. You know, fans want to see this, this, this team that they've built from the ground up on the field together at the same time, dude. And, you know, I think that's what everybody's kind of rooting for. Um, you know, I'm excited though. Like once they bring him up, you're gonna have Gunner, you're gonna have Holiday, you got Rushman, you know, mm -hmm. dude, that's awesome. And you got Corbin Burns as your ace. Oh my. Yeah, Corbin Burns, he had a Kill great me. outing today too. Oh my god. Uh, but then, okay, so this is who I was thinking of. Jordan Westberg is the oh. um, the well. I think they said that he's actually playing third base for. Uh, the Orioles. So second base is still open. 
Um, Jorge Mateo, you know, he had a pretty decent season last year. And um, I think that he is go going to be the starting second baseman. And I think maybe if he struggles or if if Jackson Holiday is just tearing up, you know, the minors, then they have no no basis to keep him down, you know, and they're going to have to call him up sooner than later, you know, whether yeah, it's cool. June, you know, before the all-star break, after the all-star break, I think I really hope that don't wait too long because he could miss his opportunity to get rookie of the year this season also, which is right. highly yeah. possible. You know, he, he hit three twenty three in the minors last season between all three levels, a double a and triple a. Um, but I, I think I'm going to need to see, He's only 20 years old, man. So I, I I wish that I had some stat cast information, you know, to see how hard he's hitting the ball and how often he's hitting it on the ground, how often he's hitting it in the air. I think that that would be an easier way to see if like what type of impact he'll actually make once he gets called to the to the majors. Um, but like I said earlier, I think he's a bit overrated. Um, I think the the best part of his game is his speed and plate discipline, you know, like I mentioned, but he does strike out a lot. So that, that is going to be a pretty big damper in points leagues, you know, even with all those walks, you know, you're, you're still going to get 118 strikeouts compared to his 101 walks. Um, the stolen bases in a points league are usually only worth one point unless you, you know, mess with your settings and they're worth more than that. I, I was actually talking to a guy on Instagram yesterday. He was asking me some fantasy questions, and he said that in his league, saves are worth 13 points. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> insane, man. And a wow. win, a pitcher's win is only worth five. You know, it, it looked like all the other settings were pretty standard, but then saves were worth 13 points. That okay. makes the um, that makes the the closer just so much more valuable you know yeah yeah wow <laughs> holy crap all right so jamal's that's, in the comments he says corbin killed it today loving having him on one of my fantasy rosters yeah i only got him on one of my fantasy rosters as well i i i yeah corbin burns i i think we knew who you meant um i think uh Man, I should have invested a little bit more in Corbin Burns. I've been really high on that guy for a few seasons now. I know Ernie is a little bit down on him. Maybe after today's outing, Ernie's like, "Oh, okay, you know, maybe, yeah. uh, maybe I was wrong <laughs> about about uh, Corbin Burns." Well, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I'll shoot him a text later on and see uh, <laughs> see what he thinks now. Yeah, yeah, that was, man, crazy. Eleven Ks, bro, in his first game as a fucking Oriole. That's insane. I love that. I think he actually yeah. broke a record today, right? I don't know, did he? I think it was the first time that that um, someone's had eleven strikeouts uh, on opening day, Ooh. or or it, it was something like that. I I mm -hmm. got the alert, but I was like half asleep. When yeah, I was, you know, because I I had just woken up from a nap as well. You know, being that I had to be up at three o'clock this morning. Um, so I, I think it said something like that. It, 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 there might have been some other details or, you know, something like that. But I, I didn't read into it too much. Um, I probably will later on after this show, you know. Um, what up, so, Ernie? Is he there? <laughs> yeah, he just. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Angel season is oh, already over after one game. <laughs> Come on, man. Have some faith. <laughs> yeah, have some faith, dude. At least Mike Trout hit a home run, man. Dude, yeah. that's dope, man. That's dope. I like that. He hit yeah. the first home run, right, of opening day. Uh, for I the heard. Angels. Yeah. Oh, well, I, I mean, for the for the whole day, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, um, unless you were counting, you know, the Soul Series where there were some Dodgers not. players that hit a home run, and I think uh, some of the Padres hit home runs as well in yeah. in that series. But yes, for today, opening day, um, there was another guy. That I'm blanking on his name that actually had two home runs today, a double dong. Uh, I don't mm. remember who it was. It's not like a like a huge name player or anything. I gotta look that up later. Maybe someone in the comments can uh who do you play can for? Look about that also. I, I don't remember. I can look it up real quick. Um, all right, so that was the Jacksons, Jackson Holiday, Jackson Churio, Jackson and three, Jackson Merrill, <laughs> J3, the new boy band. <laughs> Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The Jackson three, like uh yeah. like Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. 
All right. So the guy that I am most excited about and everyone should be more excited about is Wyatt Langford, dude. Wyatt Langford is the number one prospect that I want on all my teams. I tried so hard in the drafts to get this guy and I just, I missed out, you know, I just, in my, in the salary auction, I, I ran out of money, <laughs> you know, and, uh, <laughs> and in the, the drafts, you know, the, the snake drafts, I just missed out, man. You know, there, I had holes to fill and, you know, he just wasn't the guy to, to fill that hole. Unfortunately, um let's see felix is in the chat guys what's up felix what up, felix uh it says opening day yes opening day it is basically christmas for all baseball fans you know hopefully yes, everyone watching right now and listening hopefully your team's won you know uh or at least you you know you got to see some good baseball and got to see some of your favorite players maybe hit some bombs or something like that so um all right wyatt langford um so Wyatt Langford only played 44 games at the professional level so far, you know, last season. Uh, he was drafted fourth overall by the Texas Rangers. Uh, but, dude, he's been on fire ever since, you know, he hit the majors. Uh, he hit 385 with a home run in three games in the lowest level of the minors, the ACL, last season. He hit. He got promoted to A ball in August of last season. He he got the start kind of late because he got drafted last season, you know. And the draft is in July, early July. I think July third is that right? Last season, something like that. July yeah. second, third, something like that. So he, um, oh, I'm sorry, July 9th. And then he made his uh his minor league debut July 29th. Gets promoted to A ball in August second. In 24 games, he batted 333 with a 453 on base percentage, man. man. <laughs> 18 walks to 18 strikeouts with five home runs <laughs> in 24 games. Five home runs in 24 games. That's insane, man. 1097 yeah. OPS. Now that's in double A. Then he goes to triple A. Uh September. Oh no, I'm sorry. That that was single A ball. And then he goes to double A on September 4th. In 12 games, he batted 405 with a 519 on base percentage. Four home runs, one stolen blade, uh, one stolen base, 11 walks to seven strikeouts, 1281 OPS. It's only in 12 games, you know, a small sample size. But yeah. four home runs in 12 games? That's inc that that's incredible, dude. A 405 yeah. uh, batting average. September 19th. Only just a couple weeks later, gets promoted to AAA, plays five games with a 368 batting average, a 538 on base percentage. What the hell? That's 150 points higher, 170 <laughs> points higher than his batting average. Only played five games, but he had six walks to six strikeouts, three stolen bases, no home runs, but it was only five games, you know, a 1,064 OPS. So, all in all, 2023 minors for. Uh, Wyatt Langford, 44 games played, a 360 batting average, 480 on base percentage, 10 home runs, 12 stolen bases, 36 walks to 34 strikeouts, more walks than strikeouts for the, a guy this that's, young, that's awesome. bro. Yeah. So, looking at a um, 162 game pace, it looks like he would have hit 35 home runs with about 40 stolen bases. Wow. Um, <laughs> as a how old is this guy 22 years old as a 22 uh, year old man oh uh, and yeah yeah and he plays for the team that just won the world series dude that's yeah. a lot of runs that's a lot of rbi and i'm looking at the depth chart you know for for outfield because this guy plays uh left field so in left field they have evan carter who made the opening day roster in right field, they have Adolis Garcia, who was major in the playoffs late last season. And then they have Leody Tavares and Travis Jankowski. So there's nothing holding the Rangers back from bringing this guy up. You know, yeah. so I, I can't wait to see what he's going to do in the majors, man. I am so big on plate discipline. You know, I think I might be. The, the biggest plate discipline guy, you know, out of all four of us, you, me, uh, Ernie and, and Carlos, you know, I think yeah. that is just so important. I'd rather have a guy like Muncie that just walks so much 
rather than a guy like uh, Luis Arias that, you know, hits 350 for the season, you know, yeah. especially with the type of power and, and speed <clears throat> that, that Wyatt Langford has only, only 44 games played. So it is a really small sample size, but dude, he was consistent during the, you know, the, the whole time that he was there and he played college ball right before that. And he was just yeah. tearing it up over there too. So Dude, the I, consistency I throughout love. the minors and the majors, that's that's insane. Because, you know, when, when you're playing in, in the minors to the majors, it's two totally different beasts, you know? Mm -hmm. And you would think that somebody at, at his age would be, like, a little intimidated, you know, because you're being called out to the big leagues. You're playing for a playoff contending team, now a World Series championship team. And, you know, there's jitters. You know, young guys, they get nervous. You know, they want to they wanna show out. And, dude, this dude did not miss a beat. He, he, he went through the minors, college minors, majors, like, without, mm -hmm. without, and dude, without messing up, you know? Like, that's crazy. Going from college to the minors, going from metal bats to wood bats, that's a big change for all these guys, too, you know? Yeah. So the, the metal bats that they allow in college, that's the reason why the – the batting averages are higher in college, you know, versus the, the majors because they have to switch to wood and, you know, it, it's a different feel. The ball doesn't travel as far with a wood bat. You know, it's just, it's different. It bounces off the bat a little bit differently, but, you know, going from college where he played 64 games with a 373 batting average of 498 on base percentage, 21 home runs, Nine stolen bases, 56 walks to 44 strikeouts, a 1282 OPS. Insane numbers. And then he goes Dude. up to the minors and he just continues, man. Dude. He continues that hot streak all the way up up every level from the lowest level in the Ranger system all the way up to AAA. The, dude, this his... dude is my favorite prospect that I've seen in the last you know 10 Dude, years or so he landed in the perfect situation bro he landed in a perfect situation on a on a team with veterans who dude like I, I, to me it, it's just a perfect fit for this guy to to pick up pointers from from the veterans to show out um what he's got you know and then you got carter on the other side who's another one of those top dudes that you know the rangers are so high on Mm -hmm. like they have these these pieces man that they're gonna be good for years man it's that's awesome i, I like that the the rangers are so cool, dude. my favorites to go to the world series again i feel like they're probably gonna do something to bolster their pitching they lost jordan montgomery but they are getting jacob Degrom and max scherzer back you know before the playoffs so hopefully they can win a few games and you know, at least be on track to make it to the playoffs. Hopefully they can win the division. I'd love to see them take that away from the Astros. Um, but I, I think that the rest of the team, the rest of the pitching staff is just going to have to show up a little bit more, you know, knowing that Montgomery is gone. Even though he was a mid midseason acquisition last season, he was just so good for the team, you know, last year. And uh, I feel like they need that spark plug in the rotation. You know, and, you know, Scherzer and DeGrom coming back. DeGrom, I'm a little bit weary about because he's coming back from surgery. Scherzer, he's old, you know, he's <laughs> he's my age, you know, and I couldn't imagine pitching in the major leagues, you know, at, at my age. Like, my shoulder hurts just waking up out of bed if I sleep wrong, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different beast, you know, the yeah. older you get. And... I think the Rangers actually do have the tools. They have a very good combination of vets and and um, younger players. You know, Josh Young. I love Josh Young. Uh, Evan yeah. Carter, like you mentioned. Now Wyatt Langford. You know, three amazing uh, prospects and rookies, you know, mixed in with guys like Marcus Simeon and Adolis Garcia and Corey Seager. How could you ever forget Corey Seager, who is actually my favorite to win AL MVP this season. If this guy could play 150 games, I think he has it locked, man. Yeah. I don't, I don't think yeah. anyone in the American League can take away an MVP from Corey Seager if he stays healthy mm. all season. Seager's always been one of Knock my on favorites, wood. man. Dope. Knock on wood. Such a good player. Yes.
Uh, I think the the Dodgers kind of missed out a little bit, but they were going to have to pay big time to be able to keep Corey Seager. And um, I think the injuries in the past were um, a, a little precursor, you know, why the Dodgers didn't want to sign him long term. But, you know, now looking at it, maybe it was a little bit of a mistake. I don't know. Do you, do you remember maybe. how much Seager got paid? I don't remember how much Seager got paid. I know it was pretty substantial, but I feel like uh, the Dodgers could have afforded it. You know, there's no salary cap. Go ahead and pay yeah. the the salary uh, tax, like the the extra fees that they got to pay or whatever. You know, whatever. Just like you said, man, if the owners want to bring a championship to the to the team. They're gonna do whatever it takes, dude. They're they're paying. Uh... A ten-year, three hundred and twenty-five mil. They just gave three hundred and twenty-five to Yamamoto, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. But then they would have missed out on Yamamoto, and I know Yamamoto had a really bad um, start. You know, game two in the Seoul Korea series, but dude, he's a, a three-time MVP in the Nippon Japanese League. And he won the um, uh, Yagasawa Award. I think that's what it's called. Something like that, w which is equivalent to the the MLB Cy Young Award three seasons in a row as well. So uh, he'll get it together, man. Yeah, I I think that was just jitters. You know, he's only 25 years old, man. Yeah. You know, it's not like this guy is like, like, you know, almost 30 years old, like Otani is playing with a new team. You know, he, he basically followed exactly what Otani did. Cause Otani came over when he was like 24 years old as well, you know, and it took him a couple seasons to finally like really get it. You know, the, the yeah. first season that Otani was in the majors, he didn't look that good. He didn't seem like he was worth all the hype, but then, you know, he turned it on. He got some, he got a little bit more comfortable and look at him now, man. Yeah. Look at him now. Yeah. Seven hundred million right. dollar man. <laughs> Jamal says, "Remember, Ernie. Every time an angel player walks, a member of the front office gets their wings." <laughs> hey, that reminds me of Spawn. Have you ever seen Spawn? Like the uh, yeah. like the superhero movie. Yeah, he, he, uh, the clown dude. He's like every time a, a person farts, a demon gets his wings. Y yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. And then you got Felix over here talking some ish about you, man. He says that, that he's coming your after you, bro. Coming after uh, you, homie. Oh, me and you <laughs> were facing each other this week. Yeah. Yep. Crazy week <laughs> one. And we, we got the two analysts going against yeah, each other. Yeah, I'm losing. I'm losing that battle, bro. Uh, maybe. <laughs> you know, it's it's way too early for that. But I do got Mookie bets. You know? Yeah, bro. That He alone is killing my team. So, <laughs> Dude, I, I got Mookie bets as my NL MVP this season yeah yeah i, I think he, batting at the top of the dodgers lineup you know i think he's gonna score probably 150 runs you know and really close to 100 rbi if not over 100 rbi so yeah. i'm i'm loving mookie Betts, you know and uh and on the other side i'm loving Corey seager both you know dodger players in 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 my heart <laughs> uh, all right so that was Wyatt Langford, my overall favorite. So, I mean, that's my overall favorite. Do you have someone else that you're thinking of that might be a little bit m like more to you in your eyes? Like who you no. would want a little more? No, Langford, Langford is clear cut to me just because we know we've seen. I think we've seen enough of him being that he played in like one of the most important games of his life in the World Series or in just the series in general, like being in the playoffs as a young guy and him, you know, showing, you know, composure, patience, you know, um, you know, just, just overall ability. It, to me, Langford is a clear cut above all the other guys that we're going to talk about yeah, easily. I, I agree. In terms of bats, there is yeah. one pitcher that we're going to talk about later that I think is, Probably the equivalent to um, what I see Wyatt Langford as, you know, but on the pitching aspect. But we'll get to him in a little bit. For now, we are moving on to Junior Caminero, shortstop for uh, the um, Cleveland the Guardians. Oh, yeah, the he, so he got signed by the Cleveland Guardians and traded to the Rays mm. uh, last season. So um, 
big prospect in my opinion. You know, he's only 20 years old, but in the minors, he was tearing it up, man. Uh, only played A ball and double A ball, skipped triple A, went to the majors, only played seven games in majors, you know, just a cup of coffee for him. But yeah. that was, uh, a, it was a little disappointing, you know, what he did in the majors. He only played seven games, but he batted 235, one home run, two walks to eight strikeouts, a 631 OPS. But, you know, seven games, you know, the, even, even the best player in baseball has a seven game stretch where, you know, they're not doing so good. So yeah. uh, looking at his A ball stats, he played 36 games in A ball and 81 games in double A ball. Uh, in double A, since that was the bigger uh, sample size, a 309 batting average with a 373 on base percentage, 20 home runs in 81 games. Oh, I love that. Dude. Oh, crazy. 32 walks to 60 strikeouts, a 921 OPS. And in single A ball, his numbers were just crazy. You know, uh, 36 games, 11 home runs. That's one home run every three games. Two stolen bases, 10 walks to 40 strikeouts, a 1,094 OPS. So this guy was just tearing, tearing the cover off the ball, you know, in, in double A, in single A and double A. And uh, like I mentioned, he did disappoint in the majors, but I feel like, you know, once he gets a little bit more comfortable, you know, playing every day in the majors, I think he'll be just fine. And, you know, his natural position being shortstop, I don't really think that they have anyone that's really going to stand in his way. The infield looks pretty good for the Rays. They got Yandy Diaz at first with Jonathan Aranda as the backup, uh, Brandon Lau at second, Isak Paredes at third, and Jose Caballero at shortstop. So it doesn't really seem like he has anyone going to be blocking him at the shortstop position. Uh, the only thing is he's 20 years old. So... Yeah. Uh, if he gets his call up to the majors, you bet your ass I'm going to be trying to add him as soon as I can. You know, once I hear that, you know, he could be getting the call soon. You know, I, I do subscribe to like all the race stuff. You know, every, every prospect that I have on my fantasy teams, I subscribe to their uh, Instagrams and Facebooks and and everything that I can to try to like get some information uh, from them to see, you know, when things are going to happen, you know, for prospects and when they're going to get called up. Um, yeah. So I do have Junior Caminero in two of my leagues where we have an NA spot. So I'm holding on to him. And, um, you know, hopefully that's going to be my either third base or shortstop for the for the future because I think I got him for like yeah. five bucks in our salary cap, uh, salary cap auction league. Yeah. So, um, yeah, dude, so. they're, five bucks they're in infield. Time. Their infield looks good, man. Dude, and then mm -hmm. once this guy gets called up, I mean, you know, I I, I I was reading up on on the stuff that's going on there, and um, they're basically saying because they have a, a real healthy, finally have an, a healthy infield, you know, they they're not really gonna rush Caminero, you know, they they want to get you know have him get his his uh, at bats in the minors, you know, like you said, he's young, you know, he you know, we got somebody at that age, you know you always have something that you're going to want to get better at or work on, you know, in, in his game. So yeah, seven games last season, you know, small sample size, didn't do too much with it. Um, I'm assuming the strikeouts were there because he was just trying to hit the hell out of the ball. So, you know, the guys can see like, yeah. yo, like I want to be here. He was trying um, to impress. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, I think that's with any, pretty much any prospect, you know, you, you're going to try to show out. Um, but, um, yeah, Caminero is one of, is, is another one of those guys, you know, he's very, he's very versatile. He's played uh third base shortstop as well. So mm -hmm. dude, these guys have the infield covered, man, the Rays. And, and I like how they, they, they groom their, their, uh, their prospects too. You know, their the minor, Rays, minor guys, the Rays are so really good. good. They're yes. so good at developing. You know, yep. and that's why they have one of the lowest payrolls in baseball and still consistently make it to the playoffs almost every single season because they develop their players so well, because they have the staff to scout and they know what to look for, you know, during drafts or international signings or whatever, you know, and, and trades because they didn't even draft this guy. They traded yep. it uh, from Cleveland. 
Um, yeah. Aaron Savali, was that right? Oh, is that who? Oh, that's right. You yeah, were I right. think it was Savali. Yep. Yeah, so um, that was a pretty good trade. <laughs> yeah, and for, you know what? The though? Like, a lot of people don't realize this because you know his minor league stats don't really show this. So he had two stolen bases in 36 games in in A ball, three stolen bases in Double A ball, zero stolen bases in the majors. And that looks like that was a, a little more than 100 games, about 115 games, um, only five stolen bases. But he's 83rd percentile on sprint speed. So, mm. and if the Rays want to make him run, he's going to be a stolen base for us as well, man. Yeah. 83rd percentile. That's that's pretty freaking fast, you know. Yeah. Look, look at Mookie Betts that I think had like 15 stolen bases last year 17 stolen bases something like that and he's like 43rd percentile in stolen bases you know the the bigger bases now and the limited pickoffs i think that we could see junior caminero run a lot more than he has in the minors i don't know yeah. why they haven't really sent him to kind of like develop like that part of his game but yeah. he's freaking fast man you know let, let the dude run yep yep i don't know where he's gonna bat in the lineup it'll probably be closer to the bottom you know as a lot of prospects do you know until they can prove that they can actually play well in the minors but i mean in the majors but um i, I really like junior caminero i feel like he is my second favorite in in this list you know wyatt linkford first and then junior caminero second in terms of bats yeah yeah i can yeah yeah i agree with that all right i got one more bat that we got to talk about and then we can kind of move into pitching so uh this player now plays for the Guardians. So he got traded from the Rays to the Guardians. That's Kyle Manzardo. He is a first base prospect, lefty bat, 23 years old, drafted in the second round in 2021, which is kind of surprising why he hasn't gotten the call up to the majors yet. Uh, but in 2023, 97 games played, only batted 236, but his on base percentage was 101 points higher at 337. Had an 801 OPS, 17 home runs, 27 doubles. So he does have some power. Um, one stolen base, 55 walks to 80 strikeouts. So the move from Tropicana Field to Progressive Field was a slight upgrade for him because um, Progressive Field is just a little bit better uh, in terms of home runs. Um, but, you know, it's it's not that much better. So I don't feel like that was really like, you know, a big like selling point for him or anything. But um, hitting 236 in AAA, it's, it's a little bit concerning, you know, considering he'll be facing much better pitching um, in the majors. But with that OBP, 101 points higher than his batting average, that means his quality of contact isn't really the greatest. But he must have a great eye at the plate, man. 55 walks and 351 at bats, you know, and usually in the majors, you're getting about 600 at bats in a full season. So that's about a hundred walks on the season for Kyle Manzardo. So good plate discipline, um, 80 strikeouts in 97 games. So that's a little bit concerning as well. The low batting average and the high strikeouts, but in a categories league, 17 home runs with, with, uh, 27 doubles. Um, I think that the power's legit, you know, uh, on a 162 game pace, I could see him hitting close to 30, you know, between 25 and 30 home runs. You know, he's 23 years old. So I think that the power is getting close to his peak, you know, peak being at like 27, 28 years old. So I'm not really big on Kyle Manzardo, you know, but I feel like out of all the first base prospects, I think that I kind of like him the best. I don't really see yeah. a lot of other first base prospects out there. So if you're looking for a first baseman, you know, I, I wouldn't mind taking a little flyer on Kyle Manzardo, you know, kind of being like a backup and and seeing what he could do in the majors when he finally gets his call up. Yeah. Um, I I, I read something about that where um there's kind of like a block right now that the reason why they're not bringing him up is because there's another guy that they have right now, um, Davison de los Santos, that is kind of blocking his way into the major league club. I guess they're trying to see whether it's worth keeping this other player or have him go on waivers. And, you know, it, it's, it's a weird, it's a weird thing, but it's because of this guy, this other player that he can't, 
they don't want they can't move them up to the majors right now. Oh. So I guess once they get that situated, um, um, they'll figure out if they're gonna bring him up or not. Because even in during in spring training, he he batted three eighty one. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Manzardo. Yeah, so yeah, Manzardo. Wow. Yeah. So that I mean, he's their I guess he's their uh, he's their number two prospect um, as well. So you know, Cleveland. Uh, you know, the fans in Cleveland wanted wanted this guy on the opening day roster, but because of um, that situation that's going on right now, um, they got to figure that out first before they do anything about bringing him up. Hmm. So, so don't be surprised if he gets the call sooner than later. It, yeah. it seems like they want to bring him up to the majors, yeah. especially yeah. because he's, it looks like he's hitting the ball pretty hard. You know, that's, mm -hmm. that's an extra 20 to 25 home runs that we could see for the guardians this season, you know? Um, yeah. I don't know how I, I don't know the other name that you're talking about. So um I don't know why they would want to keep Manzardo down for too long. But mm -hmm. you know, Manzardo's a name that's been thrown out there a lot within the past like year or so, um, mm -hmm. year or two. So uh, I would imagine that he would probably be getting the call up soon. All right. So that was the end of our bat. All right. Should we go straight for the ace or should we go with the guy? That uh, had a little cup of coffee in the in the majors last season, or, or did he? Mm. Maybe, maybe about... he played in the minors, but uh, is it right. Tiedemann? Yeah, Ricky Tiedemann from the Toronto Blue Jays. So he was drafted in 2021. So uh, it it looks like he was drafted at 18 years old because he's only 21 years old right now. You know, drafted in, in round three, um, number 91 overall. So 15 starts uh, in four different levels of the minors, all the way from the, uh, what do you call it, the ROK League. I don't know what they call that. Um, moved up to A-ball, double-A, and triple-A. Had 15 starts total, a 368 ERA, uh, 44 innings pitched, 82 strikeouts. Now, this is the biggest part of Ricky Tiedemann's game. The strikeouts, man. The strikeouts are just incredible, which I think I know he has. He's like starting pitcher, you know, like they, they seem to be having him coming up as a starting pitcher. But I think that he would be actually much better in the bullpen with that type of strikeout percentage and uh, – 23 walks to 82 strikeouts. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like he really does well. You know, uh, had a 506 ERA in double A, uh, mm -hmm. 18 earned runs in 32 innings in double A, but still had 30, uh, 58 strikeouts in 32 innings. You know, that's mm -hmm. that's almost two strikeouts per inning. So I, I think, you know, going forward, I would much rather see Ricky, Ricky Tiedemann kind of like treated as the, a potential closer for the Blue mm -hmm. Jays, you know, in the future rather than a starting pitcher. With that type of ERA, I feel like if he's only pitching one inning at a time, he only needs to get those, you know, two strikeouts and a ground out or, or a pop fly or something like that. He doesn't have to worry about going out there for five, six innings and potentially giving up a lot of hits and a lot of runs. He did have a 150 whip. You know, so um, yeah. I don't know. They're, I, I think that they're having him coming up as a starting pitcher. Uh, I don't really like Ricky Tiedemann as a starting pitcher. So if I see he's available, I'm probably not picking him up unless he's playing like the A's or, you know, if he's playing like the Rockies at Toronto yeah. or something like that. I'm, I'm not picking him up unless it's, it's like a, a good streaming option on, against a really weak team. Yeah, you know, until yeah. We see something good. I mean, he is only 21 years old, so he's gonna yeah. get better. But I, th I think he needs to work on the control. the The control yeah. would the, definitely be the number one thing for him. The Jays, the Jays have a lot of injuries um, on the on the pitching side. Um, I think Manoa uh, and Romano just went on the IL mm -hmm. to start the season. Um, they also had this other guy Swanson who was on the IL, mm -hmm. so they might they might bring him up to fill up a spot. Um, I do like, I do like the, I do like your idea of bringing him out in the bullpen because it looks like he's more of a strikeout guy than, than anything else. 
um, maybe a setup guy, you know, maybe he could work like two innings or something like that. Um, but they might, they might try that, try their hand on him starting as a starting pitcher simply because the, you need. know, the, at the, yeah, at the back end of that, of that rotation, they're, they're kind of hurt, you know, um, you know, who knows if Manoa, when he comes back, if he's going to be, you know, that version that we saw like two, two seasons ago, three seasons ago where he was dominating and, you know, and then last season he just, just took a dump. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You, you know, were so high on that you know, guy too. I remember. Dude, I, I I really was, man. And and I heard that, you know, he was making strides, like working out and, you know, taking a couple pounds off, you know, and stuff like that. Because I always felt like that was his his one big, you know, uh, thing that kind of messed, messed him up. Maybe the, the pitch clock thing too, yeah. you know. Uh, that's um, another thing that he was actually complaining about. He was complaining about the pitch clock. And that just got worse. You yeah, know, it didn't get any yeah. better. So it went from 20 seconds down to 18 seconds. So, yeah. uh, that, so that's one thing that, that is probably not going to be in Alec Manoa's favor. You know, yeah. I mean, I still think he's going to bounce back. I, I don't know if this season will be the season, but you know, I, I'm not sure what the injury was that he, that he has right now or that he's dealing with. I, I'm assuming it's an arm injury, but he um I'm I'm still I still think that he'll have some kind of bounce back if not this season maybe next season because he's still young man yeah um, he's, he's but, very young but going back to Tiedemann um they might actually bring him up sooner rather than later just because of the need like you said you know so, um yeah. you know like you said it, I, I it's probably a streaming option for me as well um just because we don't know how he's going to produce in the majors um. You know, spring training didn't go that great for him either. You know, he he yeah. gave up two bombs, four earned runs, three walks, struck out eight. You know, and six and two thirds <laughs> that he pitched. You know, yeah. which you know that's what we're talking about. So, um, so yeah, I mean, um, yeah, and options, honestly, sure. dude, like as a reliever, if if he's a reliever and he walks three batters, but then he strikes out the side, like who cares if he walks those three yeah. batters? Even if he yeah. loads the bases, like you get three strikeouts and then you're done. You yeah. know. His yep. ERA stays at zero. Maybe the whip gets a, a little high, you know, because of those three walks. But, um, you know, I look at Blake Snell. You know, he Blake Snell had over 100 walks or, or 99 walks, I believe, last season, and he just won the Cy Young, you know. That's so a good comparison. Walks don't, des don't necessarily need to or, or don't mean that, you know, you're not going to be elite because Blake Snell is definitely considered elite. But yeah. pitching in Toronto, I think that that's going to hurt him a little bit. Maybe a trade would would be good for him. But I don't I don't think that the Blue Jays are really going to even consider trading a 21 year old prospect with with this type of potential. You know, yeah. the, just the high strikeouts and and the the walks are a concern. But oh man, too bad he's not on the Rays, man. Like we were just talking about, um, you know, the the development that the Rays do for their players pitching and and hitting. It's like. The, they're just so good at developing their their pitching. The the Cardinals, the Rays, and the Dodgers. I feel like those are like the top three teams when it comes to developing players. Yeah. You know? Yep. All right. So that was Ricky Tiedemann. Um, I think there's upside there, but I just don't trust him yet. You know, especially if he's going to be in this in the rotation. Um, I'd much rather see him in the bullpen. All right. Now the cream of the crop for pitching prospects. The, the the thing that I read uh, from a beat writer for the Pittsburgh Pirates, it said the best pitching prospects since Steven Strasburg. You know, I, I think that that might be just his personal opinion. But, mm -hmm. dude, if that actually comes to fruition, you know, Steven Strasburg was touted as one of the best pitching prospects ever, you ever. know. Yeah. And I, I see why this guy is saying that about Paul Skeens. He's only 21 years old, big right-handed pitcher. I think he's like 6'8", six, 6'9", six, something like that. He's a he's big, big ass he's dude, man. Big ass guy. <laughs> so looking at his college stats, so he didn't pitch in the minors um, last season, or uh, very little in the minors last season, and that's because he actually pitched in the College World Series uh, last season. Um so in 2023, his college stats, 19 starts, 122 innings, 12 and 2 record, 
a 169 ERA. And like I mentioned earlier, in college, the batting averages are a little bit higher than they are in the major leagues, you know, because of the metal bats and in the, you know, the the quality of pitching and all that. But 169 ERA, 209 strikeouts in 122 innings. <laughs> that is crazy. Only wow. 20 walks, 20 walks in 122 innings. This is the guy that everyone should be looking for. If you have a bench spot, if you have an NA spot, this is the guy that you want to be picking up right now because this is the type of pitcher that is going to be a major impact, a major, major impact for for the Pittsburgh Pirates this season and every season to come. You know, And he didn't pitch much in, at the pro level because, like I mentioned, he was you know pitching in the College World Series. And they won it all, by the way. He led their team to the, the College World Series. Um, honestly, dude, I'm comparing Paul Skeens to Spencer Strider. You know, Ooh, last season, wow. Yes. Last that season, there, bro. Spencer Strider had 281 strikeouts in 186 innings. That's a 39.86% strikeout rate. Paul Skeens in college had a 47.29% strikeout rate. That's almost 10% higher than what Spencer Strider had in the majors. Now, I know the quality of, of hitting is better in the majors, you know, but strikeouts are strikeouts, man. You know, and Paul Skeens, he has the skills where he can get the job done, you know. And, you know, I was, I was looking at the Pirates, and, dude, the future actually looks pretty good for the Pirates. I think that the Pirates and the Reds, those are going to be two forces to be reckoned with in the future, man. Give give them yeah. like two 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 seasons minimum, maybe three more seasons, and dude, they both look like powerhouses in the National League. Yeah, they got they got a couple of pitchers um, up there that that are also aside from Skeens that are um, that are trying to that that are making noise, you know. Um, but yeah. Uh, Dude, Skeens, um, what can you say, dude? Uh, I mean, this this is the this is the guy that everybody wants to see up in the majors, like now. You know, the, mm -hmm. the way that he he he's pitching. I thought insane. he was going to be part of the opening day roster, man. I I think I don't know how I don't know what their rotation looks like, but if if their rotation starts to like not do well. I won't be surprised if they try to bring him up like mid season or something, man, just yeah. to see what they, what they can get or what, what they have. And this guy, you know, give, give the fans something to get hype about. You know what I mean? So um, the pirates do have your boy, Rowanzi Contreras. I know you like Rowanzi Contreras, but uh, they, but he's on the bullpen now. I think he is in the bullpen, but yeah. I feel like all these other guys that the pirates have like Martin Perez, Bailey Falter, actually Bailey Falters, uh, he he could be good. Uh, Marco Gonzalez, um, mm -hmm. it, it's just you know Martin Perez and Marco Gonzalez, they they could both be dropped or you know sent sent to the minors, even though they're a little bit on the older side. Yeah. Like they they they're not really like big options. They're they were cheap, yeah. you know, which is why the Pirates ended up getting them. The best pitcher on the in the rotation right now is Mitch Keller. Right. You know, and Mitch Keller is nothing to be like crazy about either. Yeah, he came out of nowhere. He came out of nowhere. I mean, he's been in the le in the league for a while already and last season was like kind of like a breakout for him because before that, he wasn't really anything to boast about, you know. Yeah. So so the the thing with me, uh, you know, as far as schemes go is like there's nobody uh, you know that there's no one in his way. Like, yeah, yes. he, he he's got a clear path. I guess they just kind of you know, want to want to see you know him work a little bit more in the minors and stuff like that, which is fine. You know, but eventually they're you know he's gonna have to force their hand if he's pitching great in the minors. You know, and they're gonna yeah. have to put him in there if 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 he keeps pitching it, the way he is. You know, it looks like the Pirates have really been working on their bats. You know, that like O'Neill Cruz just hit a bomb today. You know, he's gonna be a major part of their team. Yep. Um, Rowdy Telez, they traded for Rowdy Telez. Uh, Connor Joe, I love Connor Joe, man. They ended up getting him from the Rockies. Uh, yep. Jiwan Bay, who's on the injured list right now, but he is usually their starting second baseman. And the stolen bases for Jiwan Bay are are great. Cabrian Hayes, Hayes, who is 
a, a great defensive player that the bat just isn't really there yet, but you know, maybe they could pull something out. I right really on. like Jack Sawinski in left field. I picked him up mm -hmm. on one of my uh, fantasy leagues. Brian Reynolds, who's also a really great hitter. They got Andrew McCutcheon as the veteran presence veteran. That can guide like these younger awesome. dudes. Michael A. Taylor, you know, who we've seen be great, you know, defensively yeah. and has a pretty solid bat. Also, not much pop, but you know, he's he's got some good batting average. Like, I, I really like the lineup that the Pirates are producing. You know, um, Henry Davis, the the catcher, you know, I, I yes, Monty Grandall, I feel like is going to be like their like main catcher if he can stay healthy. The problem is Riazmani Randall hasn't really been able to stay healthy the last like few seasons. So I think they're going to rely on Henry Davis, but who cares? It's the catcher position. Yeah. You know? um, <laughs> Nobody so cares. Be, no one cares unless you're Will Smith or Adley Rushman or uh, no. uh, who else is out there? Uh, J mm. JT Real Muto. How can I forget with all mm. these Philly fans in my ear all the time? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they've been working on their bullpen a lot too the bullpen looks pretty good like you said Ramsey Contreras in the bullpen uh, they got a role as Chapman you know and David Bednar one of the best closers in the game yeah, so, yeah it's, it's good man the only thing left for the Pirates to work on is just their their rotation and with Paul Skeens as the future ace of the team build yeah. around that guy all these guys are are young and cheap and the Pirates have one of the lowest payrolls in baseball. Maybe next season we're going to see them make a splash and go after one of these yeah. free agents. You know, that's I, what they I, need to do. There, there was no reason to go after any of these free free agents this year because they're not ready for that. You know, they're not a playoff team yet. You know, they they're still developing their younger guys. But two years from now, three years from now, you know, all these guys that are going to become free agents. I hate to say it, but maybe like a Walker Bueller. You know, that didn't get an extension from the Dodgers yet. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of guys that are gonna that are going to become free agents in the next two, three seasons. And I could see the Pirates going after, you know, so at least one, you know, yeah. at least one, and you know, just continue to draft well. You know, yeah. th they got so lucky with this number one pick, the the number one overall pick in in Paul Schemes. You know, I think yeah. they got that because of um, the draft pick compensation of them finishing just so low in the rankings, you know, yeah. uh, two seasons ago, which is why they had that number one overall pick. You know, that that's the way that the the baseball committee has like kind of like it's set up now, like the bottom. I think it's the bottom five teams like they do like a little draft lottery and then whoever wins the draft lottery gets to have the number one overall pick, you know, and Pirates won it, man. And they, they scored. That's right. They scored Big time. Right. That is that is how they got it. All right, guys. Well, we are at one hour and seven minutes, a little bit over our time that we wanted to do. And I know Javi has to be on his way to work pretty soon. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going to go to my living room and go watch some baseball, maybe play some MLB The Show. So uh, I'm going to add PS Plus. So eventually, if anyone listening, if you guys want to play, uh, against me on MLB The Show. I am always up for the challenge. I'm pretty great. Got to be honest. Yeah, uh, he is right. pretty good, man. <laughs> I, am, I am pretty good. I, I beat my brother-in-law twice when I went to go visit in LA. He was so mad, dude. We're, I love we're, that. We're, we're going to have to run it back. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Uh, before we take off, I just want to say uh, I have been placing a lot of bets on RivalFantasy.com. You know, if if you haven't tried RivalFantasy.com, head over there. Uh, I, I have the link in our description. Um, use code RealTalkBaseball if you are signing up a new account. Um, so I've been doing a lot of these daily challenges lately, and they're actually, in, in my opinion, they're 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 pretty easy. You know, and they only cost like a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, like really whatever you want to pay. You know, and they basically just give you like two different players and you have to pick which one's going to get more fantasy points that day. It is fantasy based sports betting, you know, not your traditional like parlays and all that stuff. Yeah. That's a little bit confusing, which I've never done before because I didn't want to learn about like parlays and all that crap. But fantasy, I know fantasy baseball, you know, and this is such an easy way to get into sports betting using uh, fantasy baseball 
type of rules. They have daily rosters to download or, or I mean to uh, to draft. You have weekly rosters to draft and season long rosters to draft, or you can just do the daily challenges. I actually did my first uh, rival fantasy bingo game today where you pick a card and you draft your team. It's like three starting pitchers, three outfielders, three infielders, and two utility. And you have a bingo card that has like um, like two walks, um, three home runs. You know, you're mm, trying to like fill up your bingo gotcha. card, whether it's five across, five diagonal, five up and down, like whatever it is. And uh, you know, if if you get the five across, five up and down, whatever, then you win some cash. You know, it's it's great to um, to for for fantasy players, you know, to kind of like getting into get into this um, betting sports betting process so yeah. i love rival fantasy man like they approached us last season uh in the off season and, and they wanted to partner up this year and i'm so glad they did man because i am loving this uh this website that they have so they have a bunch of different things that you can do like i said those daily challenges if you want to challenge your friends you can also come up with your own uh custom daily challenges like if if your friend thinks that you know he don't let's worry. say like <laughs> who, who's who's two pitchers out there that's coming up in the next couple of days? Like, uh, okay, Yamamoto, right? Mm-hmm. Yamamoto, if, if you think that Yamamoto is going to do good, but then your buddy thinks he's going to do bad, you can set up your own challenge and pick another pitcher that's starting on the same day, and then you pick Yamamoto, and then the other guy picks you know, wh- whatever pitcher you think it is, and then you place your bets. You can do one, three, five, ten, twenty, however much you want to do, you know, and you you – uh, click proceed, and then at the end of the day, you know, you get to find out who wins, and then the next day you get to do another challenge. And yeah. uh, also, they will, de- um, whatever you deposit for your first deposit, they will match no up match. to $200. So, free money, man. Can't, yeah. can't complain about this free money. Yeah. So, we you got know, it's Andrew. crazy. Um, they uh, they had a um, a live podcast today. Yes, um, I watched it. Yeah. So, um, I'm, you know, if, if you guys, you know, want to know more information or anything like that, check out their podcast. I think they do it every Monday live. So, you you know, you guys can do, you know, ask questions or whatever. But, um, yeah, dude, I, I'm I'm thinking of doing Rival Fantasy. I think I'm going to start this week coming up. I haven't got really into it. I've been working a lot, you know, so um, I'll probably start messing with it well, a little see, that's bit more the cool thing also is that they have the rival fantasy app so you could just download the yeah. app and you just do it straight from your phone like that that's how i've been doing it lately yeah all right so that was rival fantasy just head over to rivalfantasy.com or click the link in the in the uh description and use code real talk baseball to uh you know support your local uh fantasy baseball analysts and our yeah. mlb analysts on the monday show Word. All right, so Jamal says the Pirates could call up Anthony, Anthony Solomedo soon. Um, That's you know, another, they, another guy that I heard about. Yeah, so we'll see, you know, if, if they want to call up like this many guys, you know, in th- this season. You know, th- there's, there's definitely some seasoning to do before they really try to make a splash. And I'm sure they want to try to get like, you know, draft pick compensations also from like rookies of the year if possible i honestly dude if paul Skeens is eligible for rookie of the year i think he has a pretty good chance you know yeah. if they call him up early enough i i know he's probably going to be on a pitch limit you know in innings yeah. limit. he did yeah, pitch definitely. 120 something innings last season so he could definitely pitch another 120 this season and maybe a little yeah. bit more you know and uh, Angelo says, Caminero. Yes, we talked about Junior Caminero earlier. Uh, love that guy. Love the love the game. Um, I feel like he's on a good team. And um, that was one of the Jays that we talked about out of the other the other three uh, Jacksons. Yeah, so many Jays, man. You need, you know what's crazy? Uh, I know I'm rambling now, but so I have Justin, Jackson, Jocelyn, Jaden, Jason, Joey. Uh, Jacob, and I'm missing one. <laughs> one more, but so those are all the cousins in my family. You know, I wow. I start I started it with with my son Justin. You know, yeah. and and everyone just kind of like followed suit. Like we That's just got crazy. all the J's in our family. <laughs> dude. Yeah, we, we were kind of debating if our second son, uh, our second son Jackson, we yeah. were kind of debating like, should we change it? 
And then my wife was like, no, because then he's going to feel like left out because all the other cousins are mm-hmm. Jays and then he's going to be the gotcha. only one that's like, you know, I don't know, whatever else it was that she was trying to like think of for a different name. But yeah, eh, it all worked out. I, I'm, happy <laughs> with cool. the Jays. I'm happy with the Jays. Maybe that's if cool. we had a girl, then we would have changed it. I don't know. I've always liked the name Veronica, but that's not uh, possible anymore because, you know, snippy, snippy. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, man. No more kiddos for this one. I'm 40 years old, about to be 41 in June. Dude. No more babies for this guy. I'm too you're old. You're old, that. bro. You're yeah, old. You're older than me, mofo. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining in our on our live podcast tonight. We appreciate everyone that was in the comments today. Make sure you like and subscribe this video. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Um, Next week, we're going to probably start doing like two star pitchers and like daily ads and stuff like that. So we're going to have some good content. Good stuff. That's the good stuff. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good night and uh, happy, happy opening day from Real Talk Fantasy Baseball. See you later, y'all.